Praise God, praise God. How are y'all doing today? I hope you guys are blessed. Truly, I had a uh, wonderful day myself. Um, just, uh, just a good day in the Lord. Just a good day of uh, meditation and uh, prayer. Um, it's amazing um, how close we can get to God when we utilize um, our time efficiently for God. Um, there's a lot of excuses that uh, people don't have time to pray and don't have time to meditate and don't have time to get into the Word of God. But I tell you the truth tonight, let me tell you, that is a lie from the devil in hell because I utilize my time at work as much as I can. I don't know if you guys are able to um, wear earbuds at work or uh, um, are listening to the you know radio, whatever, but thanks be to God, I'm able to listen to my earbuds. I stick my AirPod in. And, um, I got my AirPods in. I'm listening. I'm either listening to worship music, guys, um, just just flowing in the spirit with just prayer and thankfulness and appreciation to God, or I'm listening to a sermon or uh, some kind of inspirational um, message. Um, I'm listening on um, tools and devices and things to keep me prepared and, and, and how to shut the enemy out and to uh, um, not get sidetracked and I'm listening to uh, the Bible online going through the Bible um, and just listening to the Bible guys there is no excuse not to be in the Word of God if you are following after him like you say you are um, there is no excuse um, for a Holy Ghost filled, water baptized um, believer, one that picks up their cross and follows after Jesus. If you claim to be a follower of God, then you follow him. And that is, that is following him. Um, that you, you take up your cross and you do your due diligence to do everything you can to uh, um, study to show yourself approved. And, um, Pray and have really good communication with God, and, uh, and and fast as often as you can. And uh, we need to really uh, deny our flesh, guys, because our flesh is hungry and thirsty. And our flesh isn't hungry and thirsty after the things of God, not at all. Our flesh is hungry and thirsty for things of the world. And uh, the more we flee, feed our flesh, um, the the prideful. The more prideful it gets, and the bigger the animal gets, the bigger the beast gets. Okay, when we feed our flesh and shut out God, then we are feeding the beast. And guys, you know what happens when um, you start to feed the beast. You guys ever have a uh, animal come around, um, whether it be a, a kitten or a cat or a dog come around your neighborhood and and you make that mistake because you're a loving person to set out some some dog food or some cat food or some milk or or something for that animal and and lo and behold before you know it that animal is back every single night scratching and knocking at your door trying to get more food from you guys this is the way the enemy works he's a beast okay he's not that little cute cartoon character with you know the red suit and the pitchfork and the, the two horns He's not that guy. Um, he's he, he's an ugly beast. Uh, although the Bible says he's one of the most beautiful creation, you know, uh, in charge of the music department in uh, heaven. But um, you know, he he is ugly on earth, and his darkness is ugly, and uh, everything about him is ugly. And when we begin to feed our flesh, and we begin to be uh, self-soothing, and uh, um, we shut out God to the point where we live our life how we want to live our life we begin to feed that beast guys and that beast just gets bigger in our life that beast comes back for more that beast will scratch and scratch at your door until you just you let him in every time because you know you're just so used to it and you think that that's the right thing to do you guys but we have to sacrifice we have to get a little uncomfortable in our walk with God and we have to crucify our flesh, guys. And I know that sounds really terrible. I know that sounds rough. It's not anything that any of us really love to do. Um, 
we don't like to deny our flesh, but when we deny our flesh, guys, we are literally t picking up our cross and choosing Jesus and denying the powers of darkness, guys. And then when we do this, the closer we get to Christ, the further away the world is going to seem to us, okay? But this will not happen unless we draw near to God and we cast down um, things of the world, okay? When, when all we're doing is doing things that glorify the world or glorify ourselves, um, we're not drawing closer to God. If everything that we do um, glorifies darkness, or glorifies another human being um, we're not glorifying God guys you know I had a conversation with somebody not long ago and uh, I asked them what the first commandment was in the Bible um, because he was saying you know that he believed he was going to heaven and he he lived for God and uh, and that's all he really believed he should do didn't really need to get baptized and uh, didn't really believe in the spirit believe in tongues or anything of that nature and uh, he said he, he lives a good life and it's, he, he has a heart that's f for the Lord, you know. Um, and I, I asked him, you know, what does love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind really mean to you? What, what does it really mean to you? He's like, well, you know, you should love the Lord, like it says, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And I asked him, well, do you? You know, because I'll be honest with you. I'll come clean and say that there are things that I need to change in my own life that uh, that stop me and hinder me from really loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind. Guys, this is important, guys. All right? This is no Dr. Seuss book that we read to our children and put away on the bookshelf and just forget about it, okay? The, the, this is... This is uh, this is so important it's it, it's about our salvation it's about our destination okay and even even better than that it's about a relationship with God okay if we love God we want to have a relationship with him okay I've said this before all right this is nothing new it's obvious that when you love somebody you have a relationship with them how foolish would it be to say that you love your wife but yet you come home from work and you go straight into the man cave and you never talk to her. You only come out for her to serve you a, a plate of dinner and you don't even say thank you. You have no conversation with her, no communion with her. You don't sit down and talk about her day. You're uninterested in her. You're uninterested in the things that she wants, the, only, the things that she desires. You're uninterested in how she feels. You don't know her really because you have not talked to her at all and you, you've not given her the time of day so you don't even know what kind of person she is or the things that she likes or the food that she likes or, or what she would expect from you or want from the relationship or from the marriage because all you do is get right home and you just do what you want to do and you don't do anything for the relationship. Guys, this is what we do to God. We shut out God. We shut out God and we place him on a bookshelf for a rainy day and if he's lucky enough guys he gets picked back up and he gets taken to church on Sunday okay and then uh, he, he gets a little tiny praise and uh, he, you, you hear a little bit of word and, and you might talk to him for a tiny bit there a service if, if he's lucky to get that from you and then what happens after church we put back on man we put back on flesh we put back on our desires and uh, we got this little tingling good feeling while we're there um, during the church service on Sunday and uh, we felt good guys we felt good for a moment and uh, and and that makes that entitles us to um, say that we have a relationship with God guys no this is not the way God intended us for to have a relationship with him God said to draw nigh to him to draw close to him okay he he is the vine we are the branches we have to be connected to the vine 
praise God, if I went outside right now and I just I just cut off one of the branches of the tree that's over by my pool and just expected it to still flourish and grow leaves and, and flowers and, and, and get the rain that falls and it's just going to grow into this beautiful thing. No, if it is not connected to the vine, if it isn't rooted and grounded in Christ, then there's nothing that's going to be growing. And that's why us Christians are deader than a doornail. And we walk around with so much, so much hate and so much gossip and just so much sin in our life and so much darkness is because we're not connected to the vine. We're not connected to God. We don't have a true relationship with God. We don't have that pursuit with God where we are pursuing them you know when you fall in love with somebody you pursue them you want to know what they like to eat you want to know what kind of movies they like to watch you you want to participate in what kind of songs they they sing and and you want to get to know them so then you know you you can develop a, a stronger relationship with them that you could say you know them you know, there, there's been times where, you know, I've been with somebody in a relationship where I would stay on the phone at all hours of the night. I'm talking about from 8 o'clock in the evening until 3 o'clock in the morning, guys. Just silliness, you know, because, you know, you you think you're in love and you have a relationship with somebody and, and you're trying to pursue somebody, guys. And we will pursue everything with all of our heart. You know, we'll, we'll give it our best. We'll put our all into sports. We'll put our all into into books we'll put her all into in movies we'll put her all into knowing um every marvel character and every every sports player out there and we can give stats and 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 we can tell you you know who won the the last indy 500 and uh you know we we have all this all of these things absorbed in our mind guys and and i'm telling you tonight i'm not trying to i'm not trying to be mean or step on your toes but god will um, that's just the way he works guys the closer we walk with him the more he'll peel back the sinful nature he'll peel back peel back the what the flesh desires and he will set you on a good course guys he will he will begin to 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 draw you closer to him if you if you extend to him and want to draw closer and, and you pursue him he will pursue you i promise you this guys i promise you that if you would get into your word and you would develop a desire and if you would just ask god for the wisdom and, and knowledge and just you know love on god guys and we, when we pray you know we we have so much to be thankful for you know when you wake up in the morning the very fact that you could step out of bed that your limbs move that your heart be, heart beats that you can breathe breath inside your lungs the fact that your ears can hear if you can hear the eye your eyes can see your your mouth can vocalize your nose can breathe in and smell um, you know we have the the sense of touch you know that alone is amazing the way that God made the body you know it, it, it's amazing the way God made made us and it, it's just it, it just blows my mind how everything works together for the good in our body you know that this wasn't it's just to happen just by some big bang um, made up you know stupidness that somebody made up big bang theory and all this thing all this came together in, in, in such perfect harmony no that God created us and, he, and his creations are perfect guys his creations are perfect and God created us so perfectly that everything is knitted together he knew you before you were even in your mama's womb he did and he had planned a, a life and a path for you um, and he planned that your life would be devoted to him. He really did, guys. He did. He never desired. He never plans that our life would be devoted to the world or to the darkness. He he has a desire that that one day that we would follow him, that we would pick up our cross, that we would we would desire to love him so much and to give him the glory and honor. Because uh, if you just think about everything that he's done for us, it's 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 enough, guys. It's enough to live for him. It's enough to to decrease so he can increase. It's enough to lay down our flesh and pick up our cross and follow God hallelujah God did everything for us and he even sent his son God incarnate you know the word made flesh he sent his son to live 33 year, years in a crucial world where he was mocked and and whipped and beaten and and, and made fun of and and uh 
and, and, and he died on the cross to shed blood for for us and and we don't deserve it but yet we we will take it I, I will take it I claim that I'm thankful to the father that he did that for me he didn't have to but praise be to God that he loved us so much that he spread his arms and his hands and he died for a sinner such as you and I a filthy rag our righteousnesses are filthy rags we ain't nobody without God that's why we need God we need to stay plugged into the vine hallelujah it's like you know we have the ability to stay plugged into the power Hour, but we don't we we don't take advantage of it the Bible says that the same the very same power the very same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead guys come on think about this that rose Jesus from the dead this isn't just no little thing guys the spirit and the power that rose Jesus from the dead the Bible says God says that we have the same power equipped in us the same spirit equipped in us if you were born again baptized by the holy ghost you have that spirit if you have that spirit activated activated and working in your life you have that same power and authority that god had had on the cross and in that grave to lift him up and raise from the dead we have that same glorious wonderful magnificent power that jesus had that is something to be thankful for guys but the problem is is that we don't believe enough to use it the problem is is half of us that claim to be filled with the holy ghost and water baptized and and repented and and living for god we we claim that we're we have a relationship with god we we claim that we have the power but no we don't really have the power we we don't believe enough you know jesus went into a town and he 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 said he couldn't he couldn't perform miracles and cast out demons like he wanted to why because there wasn't enough belief there wasn't enough faith and i think that's the problem with today and that's the problem with his followers today is we we want to follow him we have a desire to follow him and we're there we're at the edge we you know we say that we pick up our cross and we follow him we crucify our flesh but do we do we really are we really connected to the vine or are we just wanting to be connected to the vine you know how bad do you want it how bad do you want it how bad do you need it we should want it and desire it so bad it's like the deer that painted for the water so my my soul my soul longeth to be you know with him and to have a relationship with him we we should have the we have we should have such a desire to live for God and to talk to God and to read his word and to fast and to go to church it, it shouldn't be this just mundane doom and gloom thing to wake up on Sunday and, and do your due diligence and, and feel righteous for one day because you went to church and you sang a couple, two, three songs for him and, and maybe lifted your hands up and, and gave him the time of day for two hours. Guys, that isn't enough. I'm talking about sacrificing your flesh to the point where when you wake up every day, you just pretty much are just you know asking God to just lead you and order your steps and fill you and have the Holy Spirit, you know, come and be with you, inside you, live in you, talk through you, be a witness, be a preacher, be a teacher, be be a missionary. I mean, fully develop a relationship with God. You know, we have so much uh, underdeveloped relationship with God. I, I just feel that we just ain't plugged in. It's like we have the outlet for the power. We have the plug to be able to be plugged into the power. And we're asking God to move. And we're asking God to heal. And we're asking God to cast out, you know, uh, iniquity and sin in our lives. And we're asking God to, to move these waters and part these seas and to move these mountains. And, and we have the power. God said we have the power. We have the power the very same power that rose Jesus from the dead. We have the power. The Bible says we have that power. We have the power. And if we have just a, just a little bit of faith, you know, all it takes is just a little bit of faith, the Bible says, and, and we can move mountains. But I believe the reason why we really can't move mountains is because we don't believe. Just as much as Jesus wasn't able to really work in that town that he tried to is because of their lack of faith. We have a lack of faith. We say that we believe. We call ourselves workers for God, Christians for God, followers for God but we have a lack of belief and this is where we need to stay connected to the vine we need to ask god to increase our faith increase our belief and this comes by the reading of the word this comes by communication with god this comes by not giving him a patty cake praise once a week and thinking that you're on your way this comes by true sacrifice of our flesh and true persistence and pursuit of the holy spirit and a relationship with god this isn't going to come just sitting here, sitting there on the couch, watching The Office and catching up on Stranger Things. 
guys. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth, guys. If you want to get stronger in Christ, do that. Or do the opposite of that. Because when we do that, that is going to hinder our walk. If we don't, if we don't have a relationship with Him, but yet we are willing to glorify the the movie industry and glorify the song industry with with music and movies that don't even come close to having anything mentioned about God. They're not glorifying God. In fact, they're they're doing nothing but most of them glorifying the devil. And we don't we just don't understand the things that we get into. I used to love horror horror flicks guys i used to love them they're my favorite movie god god recently uh changed my mind about horror flicks i gave them up now i won't watch them i don't want anything to do with them and they were my favorite you know it's like the holy spirit spoke to me and it's like this, this bothers god that that you know you have a excitement and a thrill to watch other people chase other people down and kill them and 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 you know and slaughter them and, and watch them lead and watch them die and and the, and, and the immorality and the sin that is on these screens and 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 we're willing to just watch and watch and watch and listen and listen and listen to everything that doesn't glorify God but we're not willing to glorify God we're willing to spend so much time in front of our phones, in front of our TV, in front of the, the music box, but we're not, we don't love God enough and we don't pursue God enough that, that we would spend an hour in prayer. And I know a lot of you are like, what, an hour in prayer? But guys, I'm telling you, it, there's so much to thank God for. There's so much to listen listen to from God and to get what he wants you know start with five minutes then 10 minutes then 15 minutes you know there's you can praise God for 30 minutes and, and time goes by and you're like what happened 30 minutes has gone by well we got to get in that mode where we want God so bad that we would do anything that we would pursue him with everything I mean imagine if somebody kidnapped your child um from the from the park tonight and uh you know, you wouldn't just you wouldn't just sit on the bench and and and, and you know hang your head low and, and be like, well, you know, things happen. Eventually, she'll come around. Eventually, my son or daughter will come around. Eventually, they'll come back to me. You know, I'm just gonna sit here until they do. No, you wouldn't do that. But you know, we do that with God. You know, we do that with God. We just sit and we wait. It's like we expect God to hit us upside the head, you know, with the Bible or hit us upside the head with a bat and knock some sense into us. And I'm not saying that he doesn't do that for some people because sometimes he, he needs to knock a little common sense into some people and he needs to he needs to knock some people um, with some direction. But, you know, usually God is not going to work that way. God isn't going to force your hand. God isn't going to force your body. God isn't going to force your mind. God isn't going to force your mouth. We have to be the body of Christ hallelujah and we all work in different areas you may not you know you may not be the arm or you may not be you know the foot you know you may be the little uh, toenail or something you know the Bible says we have we all work together you know for the greater good of the body of Christ and we need to come together in one mind and one accord we know what happens when we come together in one mind and one accord the power shows up the spirit of God shows up but we are so far away from being one mind and one accord we are all split and divided there's so much division there's so much distraction there's so much cherry picking of the word of god there's so many different religions religions it's going to choke god right out of you religion's going to you could take religion down to the grave tonight guys i'm telling you we need to get away from this religious bull because religion is going to kill you okay it, get away from religion okay i don't care what religion you are as long as you are baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, have evidence of Him working in your life, have a heart towards Him, love Him with all your heart, soul, and mind, that you are one of His laborers, that you repent of your sins, that you stay as far as away of the appearance of evil, like the Bible says, that you take up your cross and you follow Him and you love Him and you pursue Him and He, he talks to you and you have that open-ended relationship. If you have all that, guys, I promise you it doesn't matter what kind of church you go to, you get yourself into a church that believes all that because I'm telling you what, if you don't, you're suffering. You're suffering. Praise God. We need to find, find us a church. And I'm not saying any one religion is going to be the religion that saves you. I don't believe religion saves you. I believe you need to get into a group of people, a church, 
I don't care if it's in your home, but get get into a group of people where you can be in one mind and one accord. Don't go to a church that's so divided and split split apart and they don't even know what they believe. Praise God. Bible. Bible. If, if it's in the Bible, that's what we need to do. Praise God. And all this is in the Bible that I said tonight. It's important. Hallelujah. But we can't stay plugged into the power. Okay? We got the outlet there. We got the plug there. And uh, we're asking for God to, to give us the power. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to come down and move mountains and, and, and divide seas and, and, and shake the waters a little bit. And, and it, But God's like, well, plug the cord in. You're unplugged. You're not connected. I don't know you. I I don't know who you are. I, you're not pursuing a relationship with me. What's your name? I mean, I never hear you talk to me. If, you know, maybe you're saying a quick prayer. Maybe that's why I don't hear you. Maybe when you pray, you don't even believe the stuff you're praying about. Um, yeah. But hey, guys, if you want to plug into my power, it's readily available to you. There's the outlet. There's the plug. Um, you know, plug it in. Why don't you try staying connected? I mean, why plug into the power for two hours once a week and then unplug as soon as we leave the doors of the church and then live the way we want to live? God don't know you. Okay, that, that's frightening that God may not know me. I want God to know me. I need God to know me. It should be your personal desire that you know God. But not only that we know God, you know God, but I want God to know you. I want God to know me. Praise God, I want to know that God knows me. I want to know that God knows my name. I want to know that my name is written. I want to know my name is written in the book of life praise God and I want the devil to know me okay and if you think I'm crazy for saying this I you read the Bible guys we are fighting a war okay and it's not a physical war we are fighting some really wicked spiritual warfare out there and we need the devil to know who we are I need the devil to know that I mean business and that when I pray, mountains move, and seas divide, and demons get cast. Praise God. I need the devil to know that I am not playing around. Praise God. The devil is distracting us. Guys, he's distracting us. And he doesn't mind that you go to church. He doesn't mind that you believe in God. The Bible says even the devil believes and trembles. The devil knows more of the word of God than most of us. Guys, it's important that we know Satan's devices and the tools the enemy uses and his strategies. The Bible says, for the lack of knowledge, this is why we perish. For the lack of knowledge. Okay, guys, I'm trying to spread the gospel, spread a little bit of truth here. Okay, I have not been perfect myself. I have made some mistakes. I have been a flawed dude. Okay? And I'm sure that Along the line, along the way here, traveling to get to my destination. In my pursuit with Jesus, I'm going to mess up here and there. But praise be to God. God has just, you know, done so many things and showed me different things. And, and I'm so glad that God gave me a chance, guys, to, to enter back into his circle and enter back into his fold because he really didn't have to. He didn't have to. I could be dead. I could have died of cancer. 2015. You know, you know, but God heals. God, God, God saves. You know, and we don't deserve it. He still does. And I'm just so thankful for that. But how bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? You know, in Mark 2, um, in verse 1, it says, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. 
okay? Jesus was preaching in this area, and there were so many people that were round about. There was such a crowd. It was huge that you couldn't even you couldn't even fit your way into this crowd. You ever been somewhere so crowded that you could barely move? Okay, the, the, this was this was it. Jesus was preaching the word, and uh, there was no room. There was no room to get around to to reach Jesus. But when you're desperate enough to be connected to the vine, to stay plugged into the power, you would do what you need to do for you and yours. Praise God. And we are fighting a war here, guys. Hallelujah. We need to teach and preach and, and help and witness to as many as we can because there's coming a day that door is going to be shut. And you need to know Christ. You need to have a relationship with God. You need to be filled with this Holy Spirit working in your life. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You need to repent of your sin and turn from your wicked ways. But that didn't stop this lame man, this, this, this dude that was paralyzed. It says it took four of them to carry this guy. And what they did is, the Bible says here in verse 4, since they could not get to Jesus. Okay, realize this, understand this, let this sink in just a little bit. Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, there's always going to be resistance when we are trying to press towards the mark of the high calling. There is always going to be resistance when we are reaching to God, the power of God when we're trying to be led by the Spirit, when we're trying to do good, when we're trying to be that good and faithful servant, when we're trying to be a good co-worker, when we're trying to be a good husband, when we're trying to be a good father. Praise God, we're trying to be a good son. We're trying to be a good dude when we're going through the drive through at Burger King and, and, and the woman's been nasty to us or our order got wrong and we're, and we're a little aggravated. There's always going to be that chance, that resistance. There's always going to be something that pops up in life that tries to get you to turn the wrong way. Praise God. But how bad do you want it? How, how rooted are you? How, how deep did you dig? Praise God. How deep are you? How rooted are you? Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered that mat the man was lying on. This, These people were not about to take no for an answer. These people were not about to let the crowds hinder this guy from receiving a healing and receiving um, Jesus saying that uh, your sins are forgiving. When you need something so bad, you let nothing stop you until you get there. Praise God. If you cut off your hand and needed to go to the hospital, you would get rushed there immediately. ASAP, immediately you would get there. You would not hold out until the next day. You would not hold out for a month and just say, well, whatever happens, happens. If there was a way to get to the hospital, if, you're, if, you're, if your child was dying right now and needed to go to the hospital, and the only way that your child would live is be to hook up to the IVs and, and life support or, or the doctor could help them out, you would not hesitate. You would not hesitate one second you would get your butt to the hospital to save your child's life you would save your own life how much more shouldn't we press on to save our own life praise god we got to alter the way we think guys just as much as we would go to the hospital to save our life or to save our children's life we need to go to the father no matter the cost no matter the crowd no matter the hesitations no matter the hindrances no matter no no matter the frustrations and the aggravations and and there's always going to be something there that stops us but I guarantee you that no matter what would stop you, if you were on your way to the hospital for something as important as that, you would not let it stop you, okay? Come hell or high water, your your butt would get to the hospital. And I'm just speaking clearly tonight. I'm not trying to be rude. I, I hope you take no offense to that. But you would let nothing stop you if you if it meant that your children would be healed or or could live or you could live. You would let nothing stop you. You would let an ambulance come to your house and rush you to the hospital as quick as it could get you there because you know that they are the only place that is going to help you out and Jesus is the only man for the job guys I'm telling you what there are no other gods before him there will be no other gods after him there are no other gods beside him he is the king of kings 
He is the Lord of Lords. Whatever you need tonight, you need to go to Him. Take it to Him. You need to press. How bad do you want it tonight? Do you want it or do you not want it? If you don't want it, then then just sit there like a bump on a log and don't receive anything and just go about your own business like you have been for years. But if you want to make heaven your home, if you want to if you want to walk the streets of gold and see the pearly gates, if you want to sit around and, and get to glorify God, the Father, the creator of this world, if you want to live in eternity with, uh, with Jesus, you know, and not in a devil's hell with dying flesh and eternal hellfire, and can't even get a drop of water. It's hotter than anything you've ever dreamed of or ever thought of. And you will not get to participate in anything at all but fire and brimstone. And as much as you would like to kill yourself, you will not be able to kill yourself. You would not be able to die. It would be like you dying over and over again just as soon as you thought you died from being tortured you would live again and get tortured and tor tortured and tortured and tortured but praise be to God we don't have to take that route God has given us an avenue God has given us another way praise God he is the way the truth and the light praise God he is the light of the world hallelujah and it's our job to to take on his light and let that light shine through us we are the salt we are the flavor of God. Come on, somebody. We are the seasoning of God. Hallelujah. We need to pour out that seasoning on this world. We need to let people know that, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise God. Come on, somebody. God is good. and He is worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Don't sit there and wait for your healing. Don't sit there and wait for your blessing. Don't sit there and wait for your sins to be forgiven. You You have to get up. You have to move. You have to trouble the waters. If you remember the story of the, the guy at the pool of the that's the 38 years this guy was laying 38 years he waited for a miracle he waited he waited on a, a difference in his life for 38 years he just he just sat around just hoping that his life was changed you know i don't know the guy maybe, maybe he, he he believed that it could be better one day but he didn't do anything about it so you know every time there was an availability for the the, the angel to come down and, and offer healing and the first person that got into the pool of bethesda and troubled the water the angels would trouble the water and they would get healed every time that he would go to get in the pool of bethesda there would always be something there there was always a crowd there was always an excuse there was always a distraction there was always something in the way there's always sin there's always darkness there's always distraction there's always agitations and frustrations there's always hurt there's always death there's always things in life that are just going to bring you down to the point where you don't even feel like getting back up again but if we are connected to the power if we stay plugged into the power if we stay connected to the vine hallelujah god has the power and the authority we have the power and the authority praise god thank thankful for his mercy and his grace and his healing if we would stay connected hallelujah god wants to trouble your waters today god wants to get in and get involved with you but you need to get involved with him hallelujah praise god we are the bride of christ he is our bridegroom we are the bride praise god hallelujah in order to stay connected and have a really good marriage with him we need to have a relationship with him okay we are the bride of christ hallelujah we need to act like the bride of christ praise god we need to respect our bridegroom husbands love respect i believe that wives should be respected just as much but there's something they say statistics show that if a woman would give respect to the husband that the relationship would be really powerful and really great because men feed off of respect if they just and i'm not talking about rude respect you know like having you know, a relationship where you're mean to your wife and they need to respect you because the Bible says so and that gives you the authority to treat them like crap. No, no, hogwash, guys. No, it's not what I'm talking about, okay? If you, you're the kind of guy that wants to do that, then, um, you know, you have your place, all right? You need to get right with God because that's not, that's not what, that's not what how God intended it, okay? We need to respect, but we need to love and pursue and care and trust and, and, and grow together, okay? Just as much as you want to grow with your husband or wife, 
You know, you want to grow together. All right? You don't want to drift apart. Nobody desires in marriage to drift apart. They desire to grow together. They desire to be one. Okay, God wants to be one with you. When you are married, you are one with each other, and uh, and God is with you. He is a part of that marriage. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope this message has blessed you tonight. Um, I, I love hearing from God. I love being a God's oracle, his mouthpiece, his, his uh, voice. Um, it's amazing um, what God does and how he speaks. I'm so thankful for the word of God. I'm so thankful God has given me the chance to just have a beautiful life, beautiful wife, wonderful wife, wonderful kids, wonderful home. I could not ask for more, guys. I really couldn't, you know. There's a lot of things in life that people desire, but I really have it all, okay? If I really think about it, I really have it all. Um, I just, I love God. I really do. I've given, I've, I've just, I've given so much of my life to the devil. I've given so much of my life to darkness. I've given my, so much of my life to partake in hell. And uh, a lot of times, guys, we don't even realize what we're doing. But, you know, looking back now, I realized that I was, I, I just was stupid. There's no other word. I was stupid. I was stupid to take God for granted. Growing up in church, I knew better. I, I knew the Holy Spirit. I felt after the Holy Spirit. I knew the Word of God. I've heard so many messages growing up. I was raised. Um, I've got diaper changes in the floor of the church, in the pews of the church. You know, I've had my diaper change. You know, I was raised there, you know, sucking on a pacifier hearing the Word of God. Praise God. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that we can grow in Christ, and not everybody's perfect, and not every, and not everybody has a perfect story. Most people don't. But praise be to God that God is still ha, has an open door for us, and we can still enter. And God can forgive, and God can help you to uh, walk back into your callings and your gifts, and and just anoint your life. Praise God. I'm glad that you know that 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 kid that was sucking on a pacifier his binky that he didn't have to stay that kid forever we are meant to suck on a pacifier forever we are meant to grow up in god we are meant to grow old in god we are meant to mature ourselves and uh put away that gerber baby food and and, and develop a hunger and a taste and and the uh availability to chew on something um uh, tougher and uh Life is tough, and as we grow up, we understand that um, life gets tougher sometimes, and there will always be distractions, there will always be something, there will always be a crowd in the way to get to God. I'm telling you, the further you get with God, the more you press in with God, the more the more things are going to happen to try to distract you and to try to offset you and offset your course. But praise be to God that the devil is a liar. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. Uh, we have the power to shut that nasty, stupid devil up right now. We have the power to shut the mouth of a lion up. And I suggest we learn the tools and the strategies of Satan, okay? So we can avoid avoid the stuff that goes on. That we, we can shut him up before he has a chance to shut us up. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Be blessed tonight. I hope you guys... Have a wonderful evening, and I will be back with you soon.